Horace MD and Michael Creso. This is the matchup that never happened. Horace MD all set to compete at the Prague Pro, and he backed out at the last minute. He had some stomach issues, things of that nature. So no disrespect to that man. But the thing of it is, he was back on his couch, watching the Prague Pro, sending messages to Milo Sarchev saying, Oh, I could have beat Creso, or I would have beat Creso. Can you imagine that one? But anyway, anyway, it makes, makes this matchup all that much more interesting. You know, if a guy says, you know, I could have beat the guy, he better at least be able to beat him in the pitcher comparison here at Mark's Max Muscle. Or else, you know, he's going to kind of look, look foolish. Who do you guys give the front double? I would probably go with Creso based on that massive upper body, but the more I look... Horse MD does have some details here. He has a, a half vac. I've seen him pull a bigger vacuum. Lats need a little bit more size, I think. But yeah, biceps are huge. And the wheels, he has some horse legs. I would suggest that Michael Creso has a drier set of quads. They seem to be, he seems to be drier overall, the condition. But these are pitchers, guys. Keep that in mind. Usually mention that, sometimes I forget to mention that, but you guys are smart enough to know that. you got to be live on stage to see these guys, to really see who is in better condition, especially when it's close. When it's a blowout, you can tell, you can tell. Now the front lat spread, we're just going to sift through this one, because this picture of Horse MD, not the best, not the best at all. And we do not want to look a gift horse in the mouth. No, it had nothing to do with the scene that was going on, but I wanted to... Squeeze that one in here. And Mr. Ed was a horse, a talking horse, on a TV show. <laughs> Come on, Will. <laughs> but anyway. Side chest development. And he does have some horse legs. And I know, you guys are thinking, but Mark's Max Muscle, that's enough with the horse references. Listen, I've been waiting for years for a bodybuilder to come along named Horse. I've been just waiting to do all those noises. <laughs> nay, nay. But nay, is he defeating Michael Creso in the upper body? In fact, there's a little bit of an imbalance here for both gentlemen, I would suggest. If they were to switch, of course, who are you going to give Creso's legs to? The, uh, or the upper body of, uh, of horse to, to Creso? That would be the weakest link. But I mean, the upper body of Creso and the lower half... Of this horse, that would be impressive. Side tricep, now, is it just me? Is it just me? Or does Creso look like a bigger hunk of a lad? Like a bigger, heavier man? Big man to tea. I think he would be a heavier dude. But having said that, Horse MD, and I know, I, know, I hate to give him points after points, but because he was... Talking jive. You shouldn't be talking jive. Don't haul your claws out unless you're there fighting. Don't haul your claws out talking on a little computer. I could have beat him. But seems to me that, yeah, he, he might have been able to beat him. But size and condition for Michael Creso could win over. Let's have a look at the back. Because as most of you guys know, unless you're brand new to the sport, which is possible which is possible, the back is important. Could you imagine, with just uh, judging the front, Paul DeLette would have been the, the greatest bodybuilder of all time. There'd be some more guys, too, with just incredible fronts. Horse MD does not look like he is as good from the back. Don't know what he's doing with his hands here. And it was consistent with all of his rear lot spreads. He's got some good separated hamstrings, Glute for glute, you can see definitely Creso in better condition in that aspect. Doesn't have the separation in the hamstrings, but here's a situ situation where you'd have to be live on stage to see who has the thinner skin. Sometimes the separation in the hamstrings does not necessarily mean that you're uh, the most conditioned guy. Back for back, I'd probably go with Creso. So there you go, Creso. You're beating guys in the back development. And the back double, wow. Look at Horse MD. Very underwhelming in the back development. And I don't think it is 
a week back. He has some Latin insertions there. I just think he really needs... You gotta understand, guys. He is a friggin' horse, and horses never hold their arms up. They're used to holding their arms down all the time. You know what I'm saying? So it's, you know, it's gonna be difficult for him. He's coming right out of the stables, guys. So he's gonna he's gonna improve on that back and the in the rear double in particular and maybe throw them hooves in the front when you do the rear lat or yeah the rear lat spread. But having said that, we're gonna talk right through this and not even mention that Michael Crizo is better than he has ever been. Look at this guy. Nobody talking about him because of that new big Rubiel. But hey, Crizo beat Rubiel. And nobody was saying that it was unfair or unjust, so... I don't know, what's that say about Crizo and his performance at the Prague Pro? Very impressive, and very impressed with his improvement on the back. Now go to the abs and thigh. Hmm. Now I noticed something here, and you know me with my little conspiracies, baby, please. Prapa, buck, buck. I think... Now, I'm just joking here, but not really, kind of. I think Horse MD woke up that morning, and he had a whopper of a Fig Newton. We're talking a Fig Newton bar, because I can see a Fig Newton here at the Prague, or here at the Romania, Romania Muscle Fest Pro. So I think, I think he woke up to do the Prague, and he had a big hunk. Like, we're talking a big old mass. Can you imagine? There'd be no way he could compete. Big, they'd call him Horse Nip. Hey, Horse Nip! <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I think based on that, it might might even give Crizo the absent thigh. He was a little full in the midsection, but I think that added to his fullness. Most muscular, and you can see he was just busting in size. And I think honestly, guys, it did him a favor to you know carb up the way he did. Like I said, a little thick from the midsection. Like, say, not unlike a Ronnie Coleman used to be. He definitely didn't have a double bubble, triple trouble. And neither did Horse. Neither did Horse MD. And, ultimately, I would give this one to Michael Crizo. I think he would be just a little too much in size and substance. And, mathematically, you gotta think of it as Nathan Diasha and Horse MD, they were having quite a few little poses between them two. It was pretty close. I don't see anybody saying that Nathan Diasha was close to Michael Crizo. This Michael Crizo, I'm telling you right now, guys, this was a better than the Olympia Crizo. I think this is the finest Michael Crizo, and thank goodness they didn't have a screen behind them at the Prague. You guys noticed they looked a whole lot better at the Prague. No screen behind them. I hope they learn from that. Hope they learn from that. Anyway, guys, you think it was close here? You think Horse actually got the victory? You think that weak rear double held him off, held him back? No pun intended. Maybe a little bit more meat in the upper body. His wheels are very impressive. Very impressive. So keep it up, Horse MD. I'm a huge fan. But, I I mean, Crizo, I think Crizo would have taken him. I think, I, unless, you know, you never know. Horace MD could have brought that gyno to the stage. Would have been even bigger and better with the gyno. You know, give him power, I think, to my knowledge. Hit thumbs up on the video, guys. Subscribe, subscribe to the channel. Have a nice one.